What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the bend function inside of Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the bend function in Rhino does exactly what it sounds like. It takes an object and it bends it, mostly along a curve. And so what we wanna do in this particular situation is we want to first off start by activating that tool. And you can either find that by going to transform and looking at the option for bend or just typing in bend and hitting the enter key. So if you type in bend and hit the enter key, what it's gonna tell you to do first is to select the object that you want to bend. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna select this rectangle. And then once I'm done, I can hit the enter key. Notice how you can select multiple objects, which we'll talk, we'll talk about a little bit later. But um, what it's gonna ask you to do at that point is it's gonna ask you to pick a point to start the bend from. So in this case, for example, I'm going to select the, the midpoint of this rectangle right here. Then it's going to ask me for the end of the spine. So that's basically going to, the, going to be the point at which the bending stops. So in this case, I want to bend the whole thing, so I'm going to click right here. Well, then it's going to ask me for the point that I want to bend through, right? So I'm going to take this object, I'm going to move my mouse, and then if I was to click, it would bend this object along that curve. Now notice how there are some different options in here, which we can take a look at in a second. But if I was to click, Notice how it does come through here and bend this object along the curve. Now let's say that we were to take this rectangle right here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a copy of this because we might want another one in a minute. But let's say that I was to bend this object, but this time I was only to select the central point rather than the end point as the end of my spine. Whoops. So notice how when I do that, this is only going to bend this object along the middle here. And then notice how on the other end, right there. So um, on the longer end, it's not bending beyond that point. So this curve stays kind of like straight after that point. You can see how this bends right here and then it keeps this straight. So you can get different kinds of bends by selecting those different options in here. So you don't have to bend the full object um, when you're bending things. And so now let's say that we were to bend this object right here. We'll go ahead and do the same thing. So I'm gonna set my midpoint. We'll set the end here. But notice how now there are options in here for different things that you can do. So for example, if I was to tap this C key on my keyboard, notice how I get an option up here for copy. If I type C and hit enter, what that's going to do is instead of actually bending the object that I have selected here um, and kind of like deforming that, it's going to create a copy of this object. So if I do that, right, so I'm gonna click right here. Notice how it's creating copies in here rather than bending the original. So the rigid function, we're not gonna worry too much about right now. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a second. So the limit to spine function is going to set how closely this follows the limit to spine um, limitation. So if I tap the L key and turn that off, then notice how where I click is going to affect the entire thing, or if I tap L and hit the enter key, notice how it's going to more closely follow that spine limitation in here. So that allows you to kind of like lock this to that spine location, or you can toggle that off if you don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that off. So the symmetric function is going to set if something is symmetric or not. What that means is that means, say that we were to select a spine end right here, and we were to toggle symmetric to yes, well then, notice how it's gonna bend both sides of this. However, if I tap the S key and I say no, or if I set this to no, then it's only gonna bend on one side. So you can use this in order to do symmetric bends. So something like this, we'll set copy to yes, there we go. So that's gonna bend this and it's gonna keep the bend symmetrical. All right, and then preserve structure is going to set whether the current control point structure of the object is maintained after you make this bend. So if I was to set this to yes th and then click, notice how it's only going to bend this object and it's gonna create these four points, right? So we've really only got um, four control points on the object that it's created right here. However, if you turn preserve structure off, so let's say we're to bend this again, but this time we were to turn that to off, and then bend this, notice how what it's gonna do is it's gonna add all of these additional control points in here. So you can use this in order to add new control points. So basically it's going to add new points to this object in here when you bend it. So it's adding more detail, allowing this to follow along with your bend more closely. And so a couple other things I wanna talk about. So first off, um, the bend function is also going to work with 3D shapes. So it's not just gonna work with two dimensional shapes, right? So if we were to come in here and bend 
this object right here. And we can do this in perspective mode as well. But let's say that we were to try to bend this object. You can click and it's going to bend that 3D shape right here. So you can use this in order to create 3D bent shapes inside your models. In addition, you can also type in values in here. And so say I wanted to bend this 180 degrees, I can actually type in a value of 180 and it's going to set 180 degrees. Let me go ahead and hit the enter key, then I'm gonna click. Notice how when I click this, this actually bent this object 180 degrees along this curve. And so you can use this in order to set um, these more precise bends in here. Another thing you can do is you can also select multiple objects, right? So right now I've got an array of cubes that I've created. Notice how each one of these is or has been created as a separate object. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate these real quick. So we'll create a copy up here. But notice how if I select this series of objects in here like this, so I'm just going to do a shift click. I'm going to type bend, but I can use this in order to bend this group of objects as well. So notice how even though this is multiple objects that's in here, I can use this in order to create a bend of them and they're going to follow along with this. So you can use this to bend multiple objects either like this, which is interesting um, for sure. So if I type in 180 degrees, hit enter, notice how I can create a bent version of all of these objects that are in here. So that's definitely something that you can do, but then you can also use it to place objects along a curve. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to take these objects and array them along a curve like this. Well, what we could do is we could type in bend. We're gonna select our objects and hit the enter key. And then I'm gonna click and click again. And so one thing that we wanna make sure that we do is we set rigid to yes, because we don't want this. Notice how right now these boxes, for example, are getting deformed. Well, if we were to type in an R and hit the enter key, Notice how it'll take those objects and it'll bend them along the curve, but it'll keep the, um, the actual shape of the objects rigid, meaning they're not actually losing anything having to do with their internal makeup, but um, you're still able to kind of bend them along a curve like this. And then if I was to type in like a value of 90 or something like that and then click, notice how I can use this in order to place objects along a curve inside a rhino um, without actually deforming them, which has a lot of interesting uh, implications as well, which we can talk about in a future video. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about the Ben tool in Rhino. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.